Well, speaking of children, what's up with kids? Are are, are they Probably are they fun. all uh, wild, promiscuous uh, uh, teenagers who are having uh, children out of wedlock because uh, marriage doesn't matter anymore? Are they all uh, alpha males who are uh, uh, watching the latest uh, uh, Eastern European guy who converted to Islam? Uh, are, are, are they all uh, demi uh, furries who are going to anime conventions because uh, Western art is dead, or or are they are they normal? What what what's up with those kids? Well, I think see I okay so there's there's kind of two ways that people want me to talk about this. I find everyone either wants me to be a black pill to pessimist and be like the world's getting worse, everything sucks, give up, it's all going to hell. Or they want me to say, hey, no, it's the same problems we've always had. No, it's pretty bad. It's it's pretty bad out there. Like, I, I think it's okay for us to do that. Like, I think some pastors try to overgo the other way and say, like, no, this is just nothing's new under the sun. This is kind of new for us. I don't think it's new for the world. Uh, I would point back to the fall of Rome, which is part of the reason why I'm like, yeah, I don't think the U.S. is going to last much longer. Um, but but it's pretty bad. Like, like we can we can say that. We can step out and say that. Um, but I would also say that, like, among the students who are reached, my my youth group, I am very pleased with the students who are in my youth ministry. And is that because I'm awesome? No. Is that because I just happen to get lucky? No. no. It's because when you don't soft pedal them, when you give them the full octane word of God, they latch onto it and they love it. You give them a mission. Like that's, I think that's the thing that like, why, why is Andrew Tate so popular? Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have said his name, uh, but he shall not be. Our, our algorithm is going to go up actually. <laughs> actually yeah. What, uh, why, <laughs> what Andrew, you're going to title this, what Andrew Tate can tell us about uh, Christianity. <laughs> the the reason he's so popular, he, he gives us, he, is he, I think there is, especially among young men, a desire permission a desire to feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves this is why men love sports this is why men love uh movements you know this is th there's a desire braveheart. to that's why we like braveheart yeah to feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself and if we can show them how that christianity is that um they get excited about that um i i think give your student a mission Give your children a, a mission. Give them a vision of a better world and say that this is attainable. You know, Christ is still uh, is still the one who, with a sword in his mouth, is marching and conquering this world. Um, he is still the one who all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. He is still the one who is with us everywhere to the end of the world, uh, to the end of the age. He is still that same conqueror, the one who's filling all in all through his church. Like that is huge. And there is something massive and something great about that. And, and you give them that mission and you say, and he has equipped you specially somehow to do that. Cause that's really what the LGBTQ movement is doing is making them feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, because the devil subverts and destroys, he's doing that by androgynous means and by destroying the the masculinity in men and the femininity in women and by killing that, making them feel part of something bigger. But what Andrew Tate is showing is, yeah, for one thing, men want and, and, and uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanked on his name. The other guy, 12 Rules for Living. Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson. What they're all telling men is that it is good for you to be a man. What are they hearing in the church? The opposite of that. That that if you really want to be spiritual, you need to look a little feminine. This, this is a, the second corollary of what I was saying earlier about the way we're, we're telling pastors to preach. Preach very like this and very heartfelt, like you're a woman. And 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 that's how we, we explain spirituality. The spirituality is something very feminine. Give men permission to be masculine and 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 to do it for the glory of God and say, but, but your masculinity is not some bravado, not some disgusting thing. Like, honestly, Andrew Tate, like, honestly, I think man is disgusting. Um, 
horribly immoral and un, and and un but but what he's tapping into is a real thing that we need to learn from is that we have the better answer we know the god who made men and said it is very good he said it is very good for you to be men and i think also you're going to see a, you're seeing a similar thing with women with the trad wife movement which is resulting i think in in some kind of terrible ways of like I, i'm seeing this trend of like women playing house with their boyfriends and bringing them sandwiches while they're playing video games and being like come on if if he's not leading you in the gospel now he's not going to do it when you, he puts a ring on your finger and also why would he put a ring on your finger when you're giving him all the per, all the perks of being a wife without ever actually expecting him to make you his wife but there's but there's i think there too is we can tap into this desire of like you know what they want to they want to be embrace their femininity and, and we have the gospel we have the word of god which says that God created the masculine ones and the feminine ones. That's, that's what I, the Hebrew there. It's not the regular word for men and women. It is the masculine ones and the feminine ones. So he made us in our masculinity and our femininity. And he made that very good um, in all that aspects. And that's why I, I will never stop encouraging. I don't have the book close to me, but I will never stop encouraging the book. Um, it's good to be a man by Michael Foster and D uh, Dominic Tennant. Uh, Tennant? I tenant, never mind. You'll find it. Um, it's good to be a man. I will never stop encouraging that book because it is not some false bravado, masculine swagger book. It is very serious. And that's what it's very serious about is getting back to the heart of what it means to be a man for the glory of God. And I think when you present that to youth, uh, they, they, they catch that vision. Like my students, um, because I so heavily emphasized training in evangelism, training in discipleship of others, I focus hard on that. I've got students who weekly are coming up to me being like, hey, I had this conversation with an unbeliever and they asked me this question, why should I answer them? Hey, I was talking to someone and they were, uh, they, they asked me this question about the Bible, what would you say to them? Hey, uh, I'm trying to start a conversation with this friend, what do you think I should do? Uh, and, and, and Hey, I had this conversation and they're thinking about the gospel. Can you pray for me? And it's all because I gave them a mission instead of treating the youth like a problem that needs to be solved. This is like, Oh, churches, you got to hear this. Instead of treating the youth like a problem that needs to be solved, treat them as people who are looking for a mission, give them a mission, give them the mission and watch them go. Because like we had we had VBS um, in our church two months ago and we had like three adults, four I think four adults involved. All the rest were youth. Yeah, All the same. rest were high schoolers leading. Same. Yeah, high and, schoolers. I could not imagine being with kids as as a high schooler. I was way too cool for school, and I was nowhere near close to even remotely spelling cool with a K, let alone <laughs> being cool. So yeah. I, this yeah, it, it was really neat to see like 130 people of uh, volunteers yeah. for, for my church and like 70% of them were, were high school youth. And here's such a cool story. And I, I haven't talked to the student yet because I just heard about it literally this week. There's a kid, there's a student involved in our youth ministry. I try not to say kids. Um, that's a whole other thing. Um, there's a student in our youth ministry who came up because one of our other students in the youth ministry shared the gospel with him when he was in, um, in, in our, at VBS and he, uh, we were driving home and he said, yeah, I thought about like, if I were to have kids, I would probably name one. And he said this, this kid's name, like, Oh, oh after the, the book of the Bible. Yeah. Them. And also the student, and I'm like, that is so cool. Wow. And this kid is a, is kind of a loser. Like this, this kid I'm talking about, he's like, he's not one of those kids that like, it's cool to hang out with, but like, those are the people who Christ went after. And, and, so that you give them the mission and you watch them go. And he, he is there. They're just so serious about pursuing the next, pursuing young people, younger than them with the gospel. And so we don't have to, I don't have to, I, I didn't even tell them to sign up for a sports camp this year. They just did it. And they, they just did it. That's what we do for BBS, <laughs> but they just did it. And, and it was amazing. And watching them get excited about like coming up to me and be like, I just had a conversation about the gospel with a, with one of the kids in our group and and just give them a mission stop treating them like a problem that needs to be solved and and give them space to run and give them a mission and also stop playing stupid games with them all right no like licking peanut butter underneath armpits ah.
be serious. They they know this is more serious than that. They know that this is flippant nonsense and that, that it's waste a waste of time. So give them the real stuff and give them a mission. You know? 